Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to our French defense series. So in this series we're covering so many sidelines, many variations of this very nice and static opening and today we're continuing again with this so-called advanced variation and in my previous videos uh, I've showed you some good ways how to play this advanced variation from white perspective. Today we'll also analyze the advanced variation from black's perspective. So if you're familiar with my uh, playlist uh, of this French defense series then you know that my first three videos of this series um, are how to beat the French defense then after that we have covered many sidelines for instance like the classical or Steinitz variation also uh, the burn variation so as I said today we're continuing with this advanced variation from Brex perspective so let's check out now some possible sidelines and uh, uh, my recommendation if your opponent from white's perspective plays this uh, advanced variation is to go into this so-called Juve variation I of course show you what's all about and what are the strategies of this particular opening line and also uh, what are your planning ideas uh, how to proceed here from from black's perspective so let's check out now this advanced variation again so e4 we play e6 d4 d5 and now e5 so the problem as i mentioned also in my previous video is that uh, you have taken out this uh, very important square for black uh, black would love to play the move knight to f6 in the classical variation for instance if white plays knight to c3 knight to f6 at least we have developed this knight and after e5 knight to d7 will happen and we will continue simply with the move c5 it's similar to the classical variation this advanced variation but there are uh, many uh, differences and uh, here after the move e5 you see we don't have any more this very powerful square um uh, an f6 so if we try knight to h6 immediately then uh, the bishop will take probably this knight and uh, we would have double pawns we would have all have also several weaknesses so that's why here my recommendation is to go with the move c5 uh, immediately challenging a white center the most important thing about this uh, variation is to delay a little bit the uh, castling uh, because if you castle too early now in this particular variation then you see white has already this advanced pawn after potential bishop to d3 i guarantee you you will face several problems uh, because you don't have any more the knight on a natural square as i said we cannot play the move knight to f6 and um, we don't have a defensive piece in front of our king so castling on king side be careful with that delay the situation of the castling uh, first stay with the king in the center or surprise your opponent with castling queen side so so far uh, the main idea is now to crack uh, white's very important d4 pawn and if you uh, see most of the times your opponent will play the move c3 so now knight to c6 simply challenging the center and now knight to f3 this is now the setup my recommendation now uh, after this particular move order is to play the move bishop to d7 it's a very important move uh, maybe you think this is nothing special uh, not uh, black doesn't gain anything first of all there is a positional idea about this move bishop to d7 first of all we are delaying the situation so we simply develop the piece but we want to see also what white is going to do if for instance bishop to b5 happens uh, you see there is maybe the threat to go bishop to c6 then we can go can go simply knight takes e5 and you see the bishop is hanging if bishop to d7 knight takes d7 so the bishop cannot be developed here so that's why you will some uh, see sometimes that your opponent will try to move a3 and in this uh variation i wanted to show a really cool game here played by temur Ajabov with the black pieces the idea about this a3 move is to support now uh this b4 square and now white threatens really to go into a very positional line with the move uh, b4 so if you play something like i don't know knight to uh e7 you see then you risk maybe uh d takes uh, c5 if you try again to attack the knight then you see this b4 idea is very very tricky or maybe a white can rely on his uh, on his uh, pawn here and uh, can really grab some space so that's why my recommendation after the move a3 here uh, is now to simply uh, play rook to a uh, rook to c8 we don't want to take off uh, here the connection between the bishop and the pawn if d takes c5 happens then we can get out with our bishop very very actively so it's uh, not a bad position here for black and then maybe go with our common idea knight to e7 so uh here in the game uh 
uh, Temur, after the move uh, by Temur Ajabov, rook to c8, his opponent, uh, Dan, uh, Dam Helgi Ziska, tried here bishop to d3. Now, simply c takes d4, and after c takes d4, now comes the tricky part, queen to b6. You see, we have already challenged now uh, white's pawn on d4. The problem for white in some occasions is that if this if we wouldn't have played maybe the bishop on d7 i just wanted to imagine this position without the bishop here then knight to d4 knight takes d4 queen to d4 is not possible because because you get the discovered attack a bishop to b5 you so you see you don't have the bishop here and you lose the queen on d4 now it's perfectly fine to challenge the pawn on d4 so that's why a uh, white needs to, now to go with the move uh bishop to c2 here and here comes a really really tactical line that i want you to memorize that uh, you could really really try here you can take knight takes d4 uh the problem now for white here is of course if white takes with the queen uh then he'll lose simply the bishop on c2 so that's why white needs to take with the knight it seems like uh black has lost a piece but now bishop to um uh, bishop to c5 if bishop to e3 happens then is there is a problem you lose the pawn on b2 the rook is hanging the knight is also hanging so that's why here uh white needs to go with the move knight to b3 and now bishop takes f2 this is the tricky part we have gained uh two pawns uh, for uh, so far for the minor piece but we have also prevented uh, white from castling here uh, king to e2 was played by white and Temur Ajabov simply played knight to h6 now this bishop takes h6 g takes h6 is not so powerful here for um, white because there is always this threat to play uh, queen to e3 now there is also a tactical threat bishop to b5 rook to g8 is a possibility so the bishop pair is perfectly fine uh, this is simply a too passive setup here so far so that's why uh, here in this line uh, white didn't take the knight on h6 tried knight to c3 developing move and now knight to g4 we want to play much more actively now with our knight the idea is now to sneak in somehow with the queen here on this very active square uh, f2 in the game a4 was played and now uh, bishop to g3 if you try uh, h takes g3 then you can uh, face several problems after queen to f2 so it's not a possibility so far uh, in the game white right here uh, queen to d4 and now queen takes d4 knight takes d4 but now bishop to e5 and what we have gained now are three pawns for the minor piece and here Temur Ajavov played a really brilliant game I believe because here uh, okay you have knight to f3 uh, bishop to d6 but still this is playable the most important thing now is that this these three extra pawns are in the center so we can simply move them further and simply attack the minor pieces for instance this knight also the bishop we have also a very powerful activity uh, on the c file uh, you see knight on b5 uh, is not a possibility so far because the bishop is hanging so uh, we what we want to do now is to play on a restriction idea maybe something like a uh, a6 but also here e5 maybe e4 d4 is a possibility so simply pushing for, forward our pawn so bishop to b3 we have castling by rajabov uh, h3 knight to f6 bishop to uh, e3 and now comes this idea a6 and uh, never allow this bishop uh, pardon me this knight to come actively into the game in the game uh, rook to c1 was played and now b5 tracking the position a takes b a takes b and now bishop to f6 but now knight to h5 you see there are also several weaknesses here on dark squares uh, we can use now this square on g3 in order to activate our knight that's why king to d2 was played knight to g3 uh, rook to e1 and now very important move b4 kicking away the knight because we want to take this square for a knight in the game and knight to e2 was played and now knight to e4 uh, we can play simply knight to c5 we don't want to take this bishop this bishop is bad anyway what we want to do is continue our progress here on the queen side this bishop is a little bit loose on the board here that's why knight to c5 was played and now after bishop to c2 now comes this very important move e5 so we have now this pawn central control as as i mentioned we're down a piece but uh, these pieces are not active here by white in the game uh, bishop to d2 was played and now very nice move knight to a4 attacking here the um, 
uh, the pawn on b2 in the game rook to uh, uh, rook to b1 was played and now uh, here simply rook takes c2 great tactic uh, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, Temur Ajabov saw because after king to c2 we can play bishop to f5 attacking here uh, the king uh, the knight uh, the rook is hanging we can also try here or rook to c8 and after that so this uh, rook uh, will be lost in the game uh, b3 was played and now here after rook to c8 in this position white resigned because if you take then you face a very very nice tactical shot rook to, uh, bishop to a4 uh, you're going to be checkmated you can try rook to b3 but now after bishop takes b3 it's game over so let's go back um, as i said after this move bishop to c5 uh, here there is uh, really really an annoying position here for for white uh, to handle you cannot castle although you're up a piece but you saw how uh, here temur Jabov developed uh, his pieces very very actively and grabbed also this pawn this pawn is hard to protect even if you try something like uh, bishop to f4 we can also play something like g5 uh, deflecting the bishop so what we want to do as i said is gain three pawns or a minor piece and go maybe into a very very complex middle game so let's check out now um, also another game it's a game played by fabiano caruana here with the black pieces against veselin topalov the former uh, world champion against the former world championship challenger here e4 uh, we have the e6 again this advanced variation c5 c3 knight to c6 knight to f3 and again bishop to d7 so as i pointed out this importance of this move bishop to d7 delaying ideas also preventive ideas uh, because bishop to b5 could be sort of a positional threat so here bishop to e2 so not this bishop to d3 idea in the game uh, caruana tried knight to e7 what we would love to do is somehow to fix our knight on f5 maybe further challenging um, uh, this uh, pawn on d4 here if uh, h4 was played by topalov we have queen to b6 again simply delaying the situation of castling because you can see sometimes uh, the move knight to g6 uh, but there's a problem because topalov played this early uh h4 move now h5 you see again you have to retreat with the knight and now h6 is also a possibility so we're simply kicked away by this pawn on a on the h file so that's why uh caruana went into another line so be prepared here uh, don't play this move knight to g6 when your opponent doesn't play maybe here the h5 move if he tries to castle then i think uh this idea to go knight to g6 is a perfect one because now h4 is not a possibility white will need many many moves maybe g3 h4 in order to kick away your knight but now after bishop to e7 and castling we would have a perfect position so only if your opponent plays h4 then this knight to g6 is not a possibility now after potential castling i think we could break the position with the f6 move and i believe that's really perfect position so that's why you see topalov knows his theory he plays h4 uh prevents this idea knight to f5 is not a possibility now because you get simply kicked away by another pawn g4 now you cannot take the pawn on h4 because the uh, pawn is protected twice uh by the knight and the, and the rook so again you have to retreat if you try knight to h6 i think that uh, bishop takes h6 will happen immediately so that's why here Caruana played, I think, this accurate variation with the move queen to b6. We have knight to a3. Uh, I've mentioned this idea uh, in my previous vid video of the advanced variation. The idea is to play knight to c2, uh, then protect our d4 pawn further. Here in the game, uh, Caruana undermines the pressure in the center. C takes d4, and after c takes d4, knight to b4. Very important move to prevent this knight to c2 idea if knight to c2 happens then we could uh, play with our another other knight here knight to uh, knight to c6 in the game topalov tried h5 very important move it's a common idea in uh, in the french to, uh, in the french uh, defense to advance simply the h pawn h pawn this pawn creates a very important space advantage for white here in the game h6 uh, caruana prevents h6 by white himself bishop to d2 and now a uh, a6 the idea behind this move a6 is to restrict this um, bishop's ab ability maybe here to cut off uh, the connection between the knight and the queen then you could face some tactical problems after bishop takes uh, b4 in the game uh, here bishop to c3 was played by topalov and now knight to c6 you see now 
I just want you to stop here a little bit and uh, evaluate the position. Okay, nothing special has happened. But at least you see now we have developed all of our minor pieces. We have, we have still a good activity with our bishop. The bishop has good diagonals. Uh, we can play something like bishop to e7. And the most important thing now in this position for black is that we have the flexibility to castle now kingside or queenside. We'll see again where white is going to attack in the game rook to h3 was played by Topalov. We have queenside castling now by uh by Caruana because uh, he sensed that of course rook to g3 will happen with some attacking possibilities on uh, the square g7 in the game king to f1 king to b8 and now queen to d2 was played and now f6 very very important move now by Caruana to crack simply the position uh here we are not allowing this pawn to be like this uh for a long time now it's really time to challenge white's center because the main advantage as i mentioned also in my introduction video and in my many videos of the french defense that white has simply the space advantage on the fifth rank we want to crack the position here with the move f6 here e takes f6 uh, g takes f6 and we what we want to do is simply now to push this pawn further with potential e5 moves to simply create a pawn storm in the center but of course, um, white has also some counter-attack possibilities here. Rook to g3, uh, played by Topalov. Very nice move here. Bishop to uh, bishop to uh, c8, attacking the pawn on h5. That's why knight to h4 has to be played. And now bishop to d6. We have rook to g7, and now f. Uh, pardon me, e5. So now it's really a dynamic position, but. At least we have created some kind of a dynamic position because you saw sometimes in some occasions you have faced the problems of uh, this static positions when uh, the space advantage that white has created is simply too much to handle for us uh, we get simply kicked away by the spawns in the center here i believe uh, caruana found really a great way how to uh, make something happen here we have cracked now the position in the center what we want to do is maybe get these two pawns connected uh, in the center to maybe get this pawn and uh, really create a central pawn storm uh, creating some attacking possibilities maybe against this uh, bishop on c3 here in the game uh, topalov played uh, d takes e5 we have uh, f takes e5 and now knight to g6 we have bishop takes g6 and here uh, h takes g6 so okay uh, it's really a tricky position because to uh, topalov has also now uh, an advanced pawn on the g file it's uh, very hard to compete against this pawn in the game uh, here caruana tried e4 what caruana is trying to do now is to get this pawn um, on d4 if these pawns are connected on the fourth rank it could be also problematic position here for white in the game rook to uh, f7 was played rook to g8 we have um, uh, g7 by topalov and now uh, king to uh, a7 there are always uh, this tactical threats if this bishop for instance wouldn't be here the main idea now of white is to play something like rook to f1 in the game uh, queen takes uh, h6 was played but now very very nice move here by caruana knight to d3 we have bishop takes d3 uh, e takes d3 and now rook to uh, e uh, rook to e1 uh, trying to get this uh, rooks connected somehow on the second rank but now bishop to uh, c5 here this uh, f2 pawn is very very weak so that's why uh, here topalov tried a very nice tactical idea because there is now this threat to take uh, rook takes c6 you cannot take the queen because of the pin uh, by the rook on the king so that's why here caruana has to protect first uh, this knight on c6 in the game uh, topalov tried uh, queen to g5 and now bishop to uh, bishop to d4 trying uh, to to um, to trade off the bishops here rook to uh, e1 was played and now bishop takes c3 uh, b takes c3 and now queen to b2 so now the queen comes very actively into the game we have also uh, for ourselves now uh, created a pass pawn in the game and knight to b1 was played rook to um, rook to e8 queen to d2 and now after uh, rook takes e1 queen takes e1 now comes a very important move d4 so what we want to do is of course to deflect this pawn from the protection of the b4 square then we want to play knight to b4 maybe something like knight to c2 here uh queen to d2 and now d takes c3 but now after knight to c4 here we have a very very cool move by fabiano caruana if you take 
the queen then we can can take of course first uh the queen with a check take c takes b2 and there's no way that you uh, can uh, protect the potential promotion on b1 in the game uh rook takes b2 was uh, b7 but now queen to b7 we have uh, queen to uh, e8 but now after queen to b1 in this position uh Veselin Topalov resigned whatever you do we can simply push this pawn further and challenge uh here white there are also this checkmate threats on, on the first rank so this is a loss game here for white but i don't want you to evaluate these positions always from these tactics i just wanted to show you really this setup that caruana played bishop to d7 as i said delaying situation knight to e7 now queen to b6 after knight to a3 simply uh trading off the pawns in the center now knight to b4 uh here after h5 uh, h6 bishop to d2 and now a3 a6 bishop to c3 and now knight to c6 this is now our setup that you should memorize uh, in this advanced variation i think it is playable with queenside castling with uh, cracking the position here with the move f6 trying to really build slow our attack uh, challenging white center and uh, i believe this is really a great opening line that you should memorize you saw here in this position this was a more tactical game here by um Teymour Rajavo, but but with similar ideas with this queen to b6 idea bishop to d7 uh, f6 is if the position allows it so there are differences and uh, i think that you can create the setup and go uh, with a very nice continuation uh, in this advanced variation of the french defense so i wanted to show you also a third example it's a game played by wang hao here with the black pieces against sergey movsesian again the same setup uh, here bishop to d7 uh, c takes d c takes d what you could do but i believe it's more risky is to play here the move knight to f5 um i've mentioned this problems after potential g4 g4 is not a possibility immediately because we can play knight to h4 uh we can uh cement our knight but uh, here knight to c2 this is now this uh, setup this protective idea to uh, simply rely on this uh, advanced pawn on e5 e5 which is supported of course by the pawn on d4 uh here of course white wants to have a compact position around the square d4 again queen to b6 you can try out also this line i believe it's also perfectly fine now knight to b4 simply undermining the pressure knight takes b queen takes b and now after king to f1 bishop to uh, b5 this is a very important move i mentioned that also uh in my introduction video of uh, the french defense we should always evaluate the strength of our pieces and uh, i've talked about this positional trade of pieces which bishops are good which bishops are bad here of course um, uh, the bad bishop of ours is the light school bishop so the good bishop of white is the light school bishop so here one how goes uh, into a very nice positional trade of pieces he wants to continue the game with a very active dark square bishop and simply trading off this bishop is a good idea uh here h5 we have h6 uh g4 here bishop takes e2 king takes e2 and now knight to e7 queen to d3 and now knight to c6 so we have remaneuvered a little bit our knight but it's playable because still uh we can go something like queen to b6 bishop to b4 uh the weak uh, pawn is of course uh, the pawn on d4 what white has gained here after bishop to d2 and queen to b6 uh b4 uh simply also creating a flank attack here on the on the queen side but the main idea of white is simply to crack the position here i believe with the move uh g5 uh what wang hao did here is of course a6 simply uh preventing this b b5 idea bishop to e7 we have uh, h uh, a4 and now uh, kingside castling we have a5 uh queen to d8 and now b5 so okay it's a risky situation here for black it seems that uh, white has really made some uh progress here on the queen side but here a takes b5 rook takes uh, b5 and now rook to a7 of course we should first of all protect our pawn but what i like now about um black's position is simply the activity on the f-file again we want to play with a similar idea with the move f6 this is the main goal uh in this advanced variation here in the game king to f1 and now queen to d7 we have king to uh, g2 and now f6 again with the same idea to crack the position we have e takes f6 bishop takes f6 rook to 
uh, e1 and now king to h8 we have uh, g5 uh, h takes g bishop takes g5 and now e5 again simply cracking the position here uh, bishop takes f6 was played very important move now e4 uh, knight take uh, knight to e5 and now knight takes uh, knight takes e5 here the queen has to retreat but now knight to f3 here in this position white resigned simply too much activity here uh, the queen will come to g4 that's always what i meant about this relation uh, of bishops and pawns you saw the main idea here in this particular variation of Wang Hao is to get rid of this light square bishop go uh, and search for knight maneuvers uh, these are really these common ideas if you want to know more about these ideas please watch this series from the beginning from this introduction video here uh, if we value it as i said the strength of the bishops you see now that this dark square bishop uh, is facing many dark square pawns our dark square bishop is perfectly fine uh, first of all we have uh, good activity we have also an attacking possibility on both sides so as i said but i don't want you to memorize this uh, lines simply move per move uh, i just wanted to uh, show you the main strategical ideas to crack the position here with the move f6 and then follow with the e5 really open the bishop uh, the position for a bishop really open the position in the center uh, I hope that you realize this idea. First of all, this is now the main setup with the move bishop to d7, queen to b6, knight to e7, maybe knight to f5 if the position allows it. So, as I said, this is uh, my idea how I would play this uh, uh, var variation from Black's perspective. I hope you can set it up sometimes and I hope that you realize this idea because the advanced variation is played many, many times and uh, you could face some troubles if you don't play this. Uh, move order correctly you saw there are uh, problems of king side castling so queen side castling and delaying castling is also a very important idea of this uh, very nice sideline as i said if you want to see more about this french very uh, french defense uh, check out my whole series here's the link and uh, if you have troubles to play maybe against d4 you can also check out my king's indian and nimzo indian defense series and if you like this content you can also subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and um, Chess is the best, of course.